his desire, his passion, is of the whole of the world to be saved. He is not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Go and give a witness to that, that Jesus Christ so loved us, he died for the world. And give a witness to that, that God in heaven does not want to judge anyone to go to hell. He wants everybody to repent and to turn unto the Lord. Go and give a witness unto that, that there is no other name whereby we must be saved. It is only Jesus that brings the salvation. Go and bring a witness to that. He says, shall see power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the Thomas part of the earth. Look at that word, both. It also says, first in Jerusalem, when you finish in Jerusalem, then go to Samaria, Judea. When you finish in Judea, then you go to Samaria. Then when you finish in Samaria, then the uttermost part of the earth, they are ready. No, it says he was telling not just one man, not just one man, he was telling every one of them. He said, you are going to receive the power. How many of them receive the power on the day of Pentecost? How many people? Tell me how to ouch. 120 and all the 120 people that got that power he said you will be witnesses unto me why do we leave the word to one peter why do we leave the word to one john why do we leave the word to one jesus that he is the one to run here to go to jerusalem and then samaria and then judea and then to the utmost part of the earth and then i have all these uh, making calls from that country uh, pastor you have not visited us we're expecting you then this state is calling pastor uh, we have not uh, seen you for some time we're expecting you and the NDS is calling we have pastor what's happening what have we done we're expecting you and then uk is calling pastor we're waiting we're your children to we're, we're waiting for you why are you waiting for me when you get the commission to everybody and i'm the one to go to jerusalem and the one to go to judea and the one to go to samaria and the one to go to other most part of it when all these thousands of people are there what are we doing that we need only one man to do the work of ten thousand people how can that be done that's a load nobody can carry it. but when you go over there you go over there you go over there drop your violin you go over there drop your trumpet and go over there drop your keyboard and go over there and drop whatever that's your hand go over there and then all the force together that have the power and the anointing and then we go to jerusalem and judea and samaria not on this part of the earth this world will know the lord jesus christ in a very short time it will happen. I said it will happen. And that's the reason why the Lord is saying everybody should, you know, sometimes when, when you know, we make some alterations and some changes, there are some people that are sitting back there and uh, instead of praying for us that God will help us to do more of this, I told you recently, I said, now all the video crusades were going to stop. Do you remember? I said, do you remember? Why did I say that? Because you know the video is just me, you know, have the crusade there, and then we have something over there, and then we're showing the video to the people, film show, film show, and then the only the GS can talk, only the GS can preach. And the Lord said it is not video, it's not GS alone. Everybody, everybody, you shall be witnesses unto me. And when I read that in the Bible, I said now video crusade we're going to suspend that the brother there the sister there the youth there the one there in your community set your microphone and set all your gadgets and all your instruments and come on there and then preach the word and as you preach the word the lord will answer by fire from heaven and many people come under conviction and they're going to be saved in jesus name you know, you know, you know what people, you know what people are thinking. And you know, have many people they are coming to me say, Pastor, praise the Lord. Pastor, praise. I said, Why are you praising the Lord? Before I praise the Lord, would you tell me what are you praising the Lord about? They say, You know, this 24 by 7. Now, it releases everybody now. Nobody can give any excuse now that they are not hearing the gospel. And you know, every day, every day, you, you are preaching the gospel. I have you in my city room. And in my city room, you are there. And I say, Pastor, welcome. Come. And then I see the pastor like this, I'm hearing the word of God, and I'm saying, Oh, praise the Lord for 24-7.
24 by 7. I'm telling you, a 24 by 7 replaces you. That's not the will of God. Maybe one day will come. If you're not doing your duty, if you're not trying to stop and taking the gospel everywhere, and it's 24 by 7 that is making you to stand up to disobey the Lord and to disobey the great commission, maybe one day will come, we'll just take the 24 by 7 away and say, the power is not the 24 by 7, the power is in you. The power is not a technology, the power is in you. And it says, rise up, I'm afraid for this church. That whenever something comes in, it replaces the human being. It replaces the power. God does not have much machine. God does not pour the Holy Ghost on all those wires. He pours the Holy Ghost upon the man, upon the woman, and the early church. Without technology, without 24 by 7, without anything, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We are the people to go. Don't transfer your responsibility to technology. You do it, you do it, you do it, I do it, and then we do it all together. The Lord is going to reach out to many souls in Jesus' name. It will happen. I say it will happen. That is a call. The call is not to technology. The call is to you. The call is to you. The call is to the call is to everyone. And the Lord is saying that if we're going to get the job done, it must be done in the proper way. And then we will have the Holy Ghost and the power of the Lord upon us. We have in the power of the Holy Ghost. We reach out. And as we reach out, the Lord will bless the people and save the people in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostle chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. It tells us in verse 42. Acts chapter 5, verse 42. It says, and daily, every day, every day, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not they, not just one man, they, not just one leader, they, not just one pastor, they, not just one cheers. It says, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Is telling us then that there is commission and this call and this commandment and they give it to every one of us and the early church this is what they did they rose up in the strength of the lord in the power of the holy ghost and they did what they ought to do we're going to do it in jesus name whatever it is you're doing that replaces this commission and you're giving an excuse and say, because I'm doing this, I'm doing this, which the Lord has not commanded. They're good things, they're good things, they're good things. But the Lord has not commanded them. And then the better thing, the higher thing, the greater thing that the Lord has commanded. If we're not doing it, then that's not the will of God. And it's not talking to people who say they are workers, not workers, every member of the church, everybody. When we say, Did you go for evangelism? Sir, I'm not a worker. What do you mean? Did you join the people to reach out in the strength of the Lord? I'm not a worker. I'm asking, what do you mean by that? All the 120 people in the early church that waited in the upper room, not just workers. Those were the people that saw Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And then they all received the Holy Ghost and then they were the witnesses. And they have a day here, they, every house. Every place they were, they preached the word of God. It, it has come to your turn, you will do it. I said, You will do it. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. They that were scattered abroad. All the believers in Jerusalem, when persecution came, they were the people, anywhere they went, they didn't say, Apostle is not here, Evangelist is not here, the prophet is not here, and the pastor is not here, the teacher is not here, there's nothing we can do. You know, there are some people, they go to a particular place, and there's no deeper life there, and they just, they just fold their hands. Fold their hands, and then any time, then they write all the names to write letter. They say, uh, "Yes, Pastor, I'm over here. There's no deeper life. You are there. Who are you? Are you not deeper life? 
Why don't you start something? Send us your pastor. You are there. Are you not the pastor there? Send us a soul. You know? Are you are there? Are you not the soul out there? I, we want deeper life to start in this place. We are only about seven, eight people here. Send us somebody to lead us. Are you not a leader there? Among you seven people. Can't you start something over there? Philip alone went to Samaria as the persecution drove everybody away. And when Philip got there, there was no partner. There was no choir, there was no singer, there was no usher, there was no supporter, there was no prayer warrior. This man alone, freely, because of the Spirit of God that he had. He didn't say to Jerusalem, send us somebody. Oh, you are, you are the somebody there. Why don't you read the scriptures some over again and understand that this is the great commission the Lord has given to us anywhere we are now, church will start there. I said anywhere we are in a church, we start there. You are in the village over there, start something. You are in the city over there, start something. And then after Philip started, he then sent to Jerusalem, not to come and evangelize, but to just tell him, give them information. There's a great revival over here. And then they sent Peter and John, and then they were able to do the rest. The Lord has given us the calling. I we're going to fulfill the calling in Jesus' name. Number two, concourse with divine prevailing weapon. Concourse with divine prevailing weapon. We're going to conquer. I say we're going to conquer. With those concourses, we're looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. It says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than concourse through Christ, through Him that loved us. You know, Paul was the one that wrote this in this and through all this and all this. I am more than a conqueror. He's talking about we, it's the whole church, everyone that names the name of Christ, everyone that has the power of the Holy Ghost, everyone that has that anointing. We are more than conquerors through Christ who has loved, who loved us. Did he love only the apostles? Yes or no? Did he love only the apostles? Yes or no? No. Did he love only the men? Yes or no? No. Did he love only the special people, selected people? Yes or no? No. He loved everyone, everyone that came into the kingdom. Because he so loved the church, he gave himself for the church. It's the whole church. And he's saying all the people that he loves, he has made us more than conquerors and he puts a weapon in our hand. That weapon will do wonders in Jesus name. Am I the only one that believes the word of God? He has said that weapon, that weapon the Lord has put in your hand and in my hand and our hands together. The weapons will do wonders in Jesus name. Let's look at this. The weapon you are giving us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verses 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons for all of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapon he has given us, any village we go, we go, we are going to pull down the strongholds. Any community we go, we are going to pull down the strongholds in Jesus' name. There is no fear in our heart, no timidity in our life. That, you know, we cannot preach the gospel there, we cannot go over here, we cannot go over here. Everywhere you go, every place the sale of your food shall tread upon, the Lord will give you that place in Jesus' name. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, they are mighty. And mighty so the Lord himself casting our imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity of the search to the obedience of Christ. The time has come. I said the time has come. You will do it in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. This is for you. This is for me. This is for everybody. The weapon of our warfare that makes us more than conquerors on the field as we go and preach the gospel, as we go and emphasize what the Lord Himself, what He has emphasized. First John chapter 4, verse 4. You have God, little children, and have overcome them. We have overcome. 
I said, we have overcome. I have overcome. I have overcome. Not because I am pastor, but because of the word of God. Because of the promise. Because of what Jesus has done. Because of the Holy Ghost that abides within me. And the same thing you have. You have the name of Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. You have the promise of God. I have the promise of God. And you have the blood of Jesus. I have the blood of Jesus. You have the Holy Ghost abiding in your life. I have the Holy Ghost abiding in my life. Because of that Holy Ghost. Because of that blood of the Lamb. Because of that name of Jesus. Above every other name. Because of that you will overcome. It says, ye of God, little children, not only apostles, not only preachers, not only pastors, everyone, ye of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You will overcome. It's in First John chapter two verse fourteen. First John chapter two verse fourteen. It says, "I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. How did they become strong? And the word of God abides in you. The word of God that you have heard." The word of power, the word of his promise, and the word of his prophetic utterance that you have had, that word abides in you. And it says, because that abides in you, you are strong, and you have overcome, in that verse 14, and ye had overcome the wicked one. Thank God, as you go away today, and you go to many places, and you are preaching the word, you will overcome in Jesus' name. Now, when will you start doing what the Lord has commanded us to do? This evangelism we are talking about, and this uh, preaching the gospel we are talking about, when are we going to start? You in particular now, when are you going to start?